it's Shira from Woodshop Diaries and today I'm going to show you how to tile a super simple design for a backsplash. So if you're ready, let's get to it. In full disclosure, I'm not a professional tile layer, but I've tiled a floor, a shower, and several backsplashes and they've never fallen apart. So I think that I've got a little information that I might be able to share with you that's worth a little something. Keep in mind that this tutorial is for backsplash tile. Tiling a floor or shower does require a few extra steps and some different materials. Speaking of materials, I will link the tile that I used in this video below along with the adhesive and grout that I used for your reference. Now to the how-to. When tiling a backsplash, the first thing to do is decide on a particular design and layout. Then figure out the best way to start that pattern. If you're doing a straight wall like my laundry nook here, it's best to start at the center and work your way outward. However, if you're doing a corner, it's better to start in the corner and work your way out. But just to throw a loop and everything, if you're doing a straight or a corner wall that has a focal point like a large window, it's best to start at the center of the window and work your way out so that your tiles are even on both sides of the window. In my particular case here, I started at the center of the wall space. So first I laid out a few tiles or sheets if you're doing a backsplash that comes in sheets and made sure that my spacing and everything looked good, then I measured and marked the center line of the area. Then I prepped. I covered my countertop with plastic trash bags to protect it from getting covered in tile adhesive and grout. Then I set up the wet tile saw outside on some saw horses and poured water into the reservoir. I got everything prepared and ready so that when I needed to use it, it was already ready to go. Then I headed back inside to get started. I gathered my materials, a square, some spacers, a trowel, and some mastic, and I was ready to go. When installing tile on a vertical surface, start with the bottom row. The key is to get the bottom row level, then build on top of it. So I applied a mastic. It's just a tile adhesive. You can mix it yourself or buy it pre-mixed. I buy mine pre-mixed. So add this mastic to the back of the tile with the trowel. You can also apply this directly to the wall, but I think that applying it to the tile is a little cleaner. It's important to get plenty on the back, but also evenly spread it. After a few, you'll get the hang of it. Too much mastic and you'll have a bunch of squeeze out and too little and your tile could fall off the wall or break. Note that mastic is not for wet locations. So if you're tiling a shower or a floor, this is not what you want to use. For that, you wanna use a tile adhesive appropriate for wet locations like mortar. Then I stuck the tile to the wall to line up with my markings and pressed firmly. I continued placing tiles along the bottom row using tile spacers below and in between the tiles. P.S. I've been told that this isn't the correct way to use spacers. To me, as long as you have the same space between the tiles, it doesn't really matter. And this method allows me to easily remove them later and reuse them. Once the bottom row was in place, I checked for level. This is the most important part of this entire process. I shimmed up as needed using spacers and folded up painter's tape to get this row as level as physically possible, all the way across. The second most important part is to remove any mastic squeeze out before it dries on the tiles. So I removed excess mastic from in between them as I went. Side note, I also picked a grout color similar to my mastic color, which was white, so that if I happen to miss any squeeze out, it will blend in later with my grout. If I was using sheets of tile, the process is exactly the same, just in sheets instead of individual tiles. Place the bottom row first and get it all level. And if I'm starting in a corner, cut the corner tile or sheet in half or cut it along a line that makes it easy to piece together a pattern and place those in the corner first. Once I reached the end of my backsplash run, I had to cut pieces to fit. So I measured the distance from the wall to the edge of the tile and subtract two times the spacer thickness. Since I was using 1 8 inch spacers, I subtracted a quarter of an inch. I measured and marked where to cut the tile and placed painter's tape along this line. The tape helps prevent chipping, but it also gives me a high visibility line to cut across. I carefully cut along this line on the tile saw and then brought it back inside, applied mastic, and stuck it to the wall. Easy as that.
Once I had my entire bottom row in place, its level and its cut, I simply built on top of it. I made sure to keep spacers between all the tiles and periodically checked for level and for square and adjusted as needed. I chose this simple vertical stack design to match what I did in my kitchen, but you could also do other designs as well. This simple stack is a clean modern design and is easy to do as long as you keep everything nice and square and you don't veer off one direction or the other. In my little laundry nook, I didn't have any outlets or anything to cut around, but if you come into an outlet or a light switch or a cabinet, etc., measure and mark where the towel needs to be cut and just cut as needed. Helpful hint, it's easiest when you only have to cut out a corner or just trim a tile length. However, when you come to a tile that needs a notch cut out, use the tile saw to cut straight into the tile along the sides of the notch, then cut this notch out in tiny strips. So in this image, imagine that the black lines here are the cut lines. You simply cut thin strips and then they easily break off to give you your whole notch. Once I got to the top, I needed to trim the tile height to fit. Just like cutting the sides, I measured between the last tile and the cabinet bottom, subtracted two times the spacer width, then measured, marked, and cut these tiles to fit. Then I stuck them in place. I let the tiles sit for a day or so, then removed the spacers from between the tiles, and I was ready to grout. I used sanded grout for this application. Note that sanded grout is for spacing 1 8 inch or larger, and non-sanded grout is for 1 8 inch and smaller. Also be aware that some tiles can scratch easy and shouldn't be used with sanded grout, so refer to your manufacturer's recommendations. I mix my grout in a one gallon ice cream bucket if I have one, that size seems to work really well. But if not, any size bucket can work, even a cut up milk jug. <laughs> I mixed my grout with water until it was about the consistency of cake batter. Then using a float, I scooped some grout out of the bucket and smeared it across the tiles. It's best to smear it at an angle. It helps to get it in all the cracks. Basically, I'm just trying to smush the grout into all the cracks. So I smeared the grout in one direction, then the other direction, and tried to scrape off the excess as I went. It's also best to work in kind of small sections. So I did as much as I could in about 15 minutes, and then it was time to clean. I grabbed a bucket of clean water and a grout sponge and wrung out the sponge really well. And then I gently wipe the tiles to remove any excess grout. The key here is to wipe off the grout, not simply just smear it around. I rinsed out my sponge and changed the dirty bucket water pretty often. And I just repeated the process until the whole area was grouted. Grout, wash, grout wash. I rinse the tiles several times with clean water at the end. Any remaining residue will make the tiles look cloudy once they're dry. Then I removed the plastic that I had laid down to protect the countertop and wiped everything really well. The last step is caulking. Once the grout was dry, I caulked the edges, corners, and where the towel meets the cabinets, trim, or countertop with caulk that matched my grout color. And just like that, we tiled a backsplash. I 
really love how a few tiles can totally transform a space and it's really a pretty simple task to stick tiles on a wall and grow out the gaps. I hope this tutorial has been helpful and if you're looking for a few more details, I've got the step-by-step -step written blog post tutorial in the link in the description below. And if you aren't already subscribed to my channel, be sure to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on the projects that are coming up next. Thanks so much for watching friends and until next time, well typically this is when I say until next time happy building, but maybe this time I'll say until next time happy tiling. We'll get back to building soon, I promise. Stick around.